Hello YouTube! I am doing a quick announcement before I do a garden tour. It is May and it's halfway through May and I need to do a garden tour. And um, the reminder that I had to do it was by watching some old videos from last year. And I have to say with my new Back to Eden method that my garden is advanced compared to last year. And I was like, what? That's pretty cool. But before I do that, I wanted to share with you some stuff from inside my greenhouse. Um, so, um, I'm actually out here, I'm actually a little bit excited. I'm out here because I have completed my word count for the day. I'm a writer by day and a gardener, YouTuber, um, just to kind of stay having fun and motivated. And um, so the writing day has done well and I wanted to tell you about a couple things that are kind of neat. So um, I have been working with White Fire Publishing behind the scenes on some promotional stuff for both um, some of their published authors as well as some future stuff that has to do with some film stuff. And you know what they're going to do? They are um, going to be trusting me with a new camera with a microphone and a tripod that I will be able to use for some of their projects. And they know full well I get to use them on my YouTube. So I'm looking forward to having an, um, better footage and all kinds of better sound, which is nice because I live right next to a main road. And it's super fun. So I'm also a part of these two launch teams. So I figured I'd give my friends a shout out. Um, so this one really quick is a uh, entertaining uh, romantic comedy, Christian fiction romantic comedy. And sassy, 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 chiclet. And then um, this one, Becky Wade, this is a sweet contemporary Christian fiction also. And this lady is one of my favoriteest, favoriteest contemporary writers, and she does an excellent job. So I get to shout out both of those, and you know, it's a real tough life when you actually have to read books and help champion the writers behind them. It's super fun. But that's the writer stuff on the side, and I probably will share um, some of those other things. I get to do some on-location stuff with different authors, and um, maybe even some really neat stuff. Like I think I might actually get a chance to go to one of the soup kitchens downtown Portland and some different things. And so I figured why not share it with my YouTube peeps because it, it's about growing the plants and enjoying the yard stuff, but it's also about the people you run into along the journey and the share with. So on that note, um, I do want to update because I have been talking about different things that I've been trying to conquer this year and I wanted to update them. And one of them is my hanging baskets. So hanging baskets was, um, but from my own seed was one of my garden goals this year. And so I have five of them. One of them I put outside a couple days ago just to see if it can handle the weather. And this is the other one. And I just really like how they're turning out. Um, I had advice from a friend of mine named Marla Bagley who said fertilize, 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 that that's the secret to a hanging basket. So I've been using a little bit of fish emulsion and um, I was thinking about actually getting some grass clippings and surrounding the plants with grass clippings on the top before so that it would help um, keep the moisture in this summer, kind of like the side moss right here, except it would be on the top. So I'm thinking about doing that. I might let them go um, a little bit longer here before I do that because there's still some plants that are on the little bit of little side. But everything is looking like it's really happy. Um, my petunias here on the side are gearing up to flower. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. I feel like I feel like this far is already a victory. So the goal is to um, not let them dry out when the sun happens. And um, if you were watching my videos. You might have seen that I was trying to grow my own asparagus and from seed, not from starts from the store, from seed, and I had nothing happening. But now I have two pots that look like this. Yay! I feel like this is a major victory. So now, oh, this one is kind of looking puny. I wonder what I need to do. Maybe that's a, a fertilizer thing too. Are they hungry plants? Um, so obviously when they bring them to the store they bring them in in the roots so it's the roots that come back every year so I was thinking about um, trying to figure out how long I wait before I plant them out they st I don't think the area that I want to put them that this would be a very big success so I actually want to wait longer and let the root systems get more mature but I also don't want this to happen so if you have any knowledge on growing your own asparagus from seed I would love some advice. Um, so I have two pots of it though, and I was so excited. It took a long time for it to, to uh, take off, but I'm super excited about that. And my little goji bushes are doing great too. 
Um, I have a lot of plants in my greenhouse that are telling me it's time to put them out. So today I'm actually going to be doing some work and so you know I'm going to give a little quick peek of what my garden looks like but um, I'll probably show you my project that I'm going to do with the chicken pen because um, I've been doing the layers of mulch in my chicken pen to keep them, the chickens from digging up my dirt and making big holes in, under the fence and all that kind of stuff and it's been super successful but today's the day I'm actually going to pull it all out, put in a fresh batch and then I'm going to put my baby chickens that are now... Um, seven weeks old in with the adult chickens and I'm gonna let them find their little pecking order and figure it out and I think it'll be a mess before it gets better but I'm kind of ready for all my chickens to be in one place and um, oh my one other thing I really wanted to say I'm so excited about this so it's May 20th and last weekend um, I had my son uh, we had a party here where my son graduated from um, college so we had a big gathering my daughter Lizzie my youngest daughter that was my oldest son who graduated college my youngest daughter she actually went and did a um, competed in a track meet for state and she placed fifth got to podium and wear the little thing around her neck you know and all of that kind of stuff but for me one of the little wins that was super exciting is I had my whole crew so there's my husband and I and we have five kids and my oldest son had his sweetheart over and we had a sit-down meal and I filled up a big bowl of different kinds of greens. I had um, um, garlic scapes for the first time amongst um, several kinds of lettuce and um, kale and chard and uh, you know chives and I can't I can even name it all. I literally it was a main part of our meal and it, it, it went, everybody was loving it. And you know, there's just something really healthy tasting about that. And all my kids were eating it, my husband ate it. And it's May 20th. I usually, in Oregon, usually rototill my garden in and start to put things in the first week in May. And I might have some plants started in my house to go out but I'm very excited to show you my garden tour so you can see that it's not established yet. It's not taken off like crazy. But man, is there so much more going on right now than what I usually have this time of year. And I was watching, like I said, I was watching old videos and I kind of couldn't believe it. I'm thinking about um, starting my corn really quickly here, which is a little early for me, I'm not sure. And um, I have some melons that I've got mature plants to put out that I would like to put out and see how they do. I am still in Slugmageddon. The slugs, I think, might have as much victory as I do. I think we might be at a draw right now. I think my cucumbers, I think I planted my cucumbers three or four times and I've slug baited like crazy. I may have harvested some potatoes too early. I have the little baby potatoes, but they're almost, there's just not enough of them. They're almost so little baby that it wasn't worth digging them up. But I just kind of wanted to see what happens. Potatoes in May, can you do that? Um, so all kinds of exploring and there's just so many little things and that I wasn't expecting. Um, one of my questions that I hadn't asked out loud was if I plant stuff in my greenhouse, my greenhouse isn't exactly um, completely foolproof for the bugs, would there be enough pollinators to pollinate things? I think peas are self-pollinating, but if they're not, look at this, I got peas, peas in the greenhouse. And there's nothing better than these suckers. This was one of the things in my in my salad. There was uh, several big handfuls. I filled up a really nice um, hod container that I had that I think is so very fun. And I put it, I had it all so pretty and then I was going to take a picture for my Instagram and I forgot. Darn it, I forgot. But there's so many things in my greenhouse that are telling me to put them out. Oh, we got some work to do. Let's go do that garden tour. So I'm probably going to do two separate videos. So this is part one. I'll put part two on the other one, the garden tour for May garden tour. But look at, this is when you know you have your plants in here too long. Do you see this flower? <laughs> the black eyed Susan is flowering in my greenhouse. Whoops, <laughs> let's get this stuff going. Aren't they pretty though? Look at how good they're doing. So these are a project, so I gotta get these up on the house. So happy days. Strawberries are coming on, but they're not red yet, and all kinds of things are growing. It's just that green, lush, Oregon greenhouse kind of time of year. So, um, we'll see you. See you around on the videos. Bye.